Premiers. Hi, this is Steph Catley from the Melbourne Victory Women. You're listening to the Westfield W League. Hi, this is Christine Nairn. Rachel Quigley. Brianna Davies. This is the Westfield W League. Live on SSB Radio. Live online. Live on your smartphone. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram at the 3 w League. Join us on the road to victory. Our city, our team. Now we're Burns! Oh my word! Lauren Burns with a rocket! Hi, this is Good John Kodjong. Koja in off the post. Hi, this is BT Go. It's arriving at the back post. Beatty Go! Puts it in! Hi, this is Lisa Devanna. Devanna's there as well, and Devanna heads it in! You're listening to the Westwood W League, live on FFE Radio. Hello and welcome to Lambert Park in Sydney. Melbourne victory on the road today in the Westfield W League, and we are live on FFV Radio, footballfedvic.com.au, and FFV Radio on the TuneIn Radio app. Hello and welcome to today's coverage of the Westfield W League. My name is Teo Pelizzeri and joining me is the editor of thewomensgame.com, Anne O'Dong, and we've got you with us for the full day's action today, and we're both really looking forward to this match between the Melbourne Victory and Sydney FC. Hello, and welcome back to FFV Radio. Thanks for having me back, Teo, and it is. It's a big game between these two sides in the men's A-League. It's the big blue, and it's definitely become that in the W League. These two sides have now built a really good rivalry, a good history that goes all the way back to the semi-final in Season 4. There's some really good matchups, which will be really interesting, and I think it will come down to winning those individual 1v1 battles to who takes the three-point turn today. Well, I look forward to leaning on you for your insight into your teammates today and also some of your thoughts on the tactics as the game evolves. We've kicked off, and immediately the ball has been hit into touch on the left, and it's going to be a throw-in for Tegan Allen. Square pass, doesn't find a teammate, but Bolger will make it work. Still the all-time leading scorer in games against the Melbourne Victory from any player in any team. You can hear the Cove starting to chime in in the background. Cross into the area from Tobin, headed down by Brewer. Only as far as Azunla, who shoots over the bar. And the first shot on goal for the afternoon goes Sydney's way. And that was a promising build-up with lots of possession for the Sydney FC team. And Liz Ralston, that was very nearly 1-0 for Jasmine Spencer. And uh, you could see the fear in the Melbourne victory defence as she went running at them. But Short corner, Bolger into the area, it's at the back post, flag is up. I think the player sneaking in there was offside, and in fact, Polias over the corner again. Davey's been commanding in the air so far, this one's going to go to the near post. Headed by Azunla, and Davey tips it over, a sensational save. Diving back and tipping it over with her left hand out for another corner. And that set play nearly worked to perfection, and Liz Servet Azunla with a very powerful header so far from goal. Game very much in the balance at the moment. Clock ticking away in this first half. We've now gone 18 minutes on FFV Radio, live on footballfedvic.com.au and also the FFV Radio channel on TuneIn. And we're going to have our first looking at the game. Amy Jackson put a bit of a bear hug on Natalie Tobin there. Bit of a clumsy foul in the centre of the park. So that's probably why she doesn't get the yellows, because she times it just right. There we go. Well, And uh, full of praise for you there, Liz. So take that on board. Uh, here's a goal kick for Davey. Headed on by Jackson, who is on that yellow card out to the right. Reed is going to volley it into the path of Devanna. Devanna goes for the spectacular, trying with the outside of the left boot, but can't bring it back. Screening them now as a long ball comes in over the top. Spencer tries to bring it down against Checker. The battle of tall and small once again. She's just going to take a long shot, and it bounces off the synthetic straight at Bree Davy. It's the first shot on target we've had, and uh, today's broadcast also brought to you by Melbourne Victory major sponsor, Jets Fitness. Tayo, you speak about the fact that the players so are okay with the play. And the ball now at the top of the area. Quigley is going to run up. Allen, slide challenge. Quigley got their second, and the ball may have ricocheted out of her for a goal kick. It has. Anne O'Donnell will throw it back down to you. Clifford on the ball. Devanna catches her in possession. Still a long way from goal, though, and Clifford fighting to try and win the ball back. It deflects to Quigley. This is all happening in a central position, about 10 metres inside the attacking half. Now sideways pass from Master Antonio to Reed, who's bowled over by Uzunla, crashing through. She's on her own against the back four here. Does she fancy a long shot, Uzunla? Tries to thread through Harrison down the right. It's a good ball. Davy charging out of her line, and she didn't know much about it, but the ball takes a deflection off her trailing leg. Yeah, look, um, I think there's a number of players, really, who could who could take on that role, change the game, and give us a bit of a, a foot up. But certainly looking to Jasmine Spencer, um, even Savet Uzunla, or, or possibly even Amy Harrison to break the, the scoreline here. Ball through the right. Brewer looking for Jackson. Fumbled by Dumont, and Jackson puts it into the side netting. The flag was up in any event. I suspect perhaps for a foul by Jackson on the keeper. Right now on the ball, Tobin. 
Reads a pass. Spencer to Bolger. Neat little ball. Right side of the area. Slide challenge from the backtracking Barnes to take it off the feet of Spencer. And the ball goes into touch. I think it may have gone behind for a corner. Desperate last ditch challenge coming in from Lauren Barnes. And you called it, Liz. Jasmine Spencer straight away. Again, uh, putting the Melbourne Victory defence on notice. And uh, Rachel Quigley is down on her haunches. She's going to get some attention from the trainer here 34 minutes in. But that is the sort of thing that can happen. A little bit of something out of nothing and Spencer very nearly threw on goal. Yeah, just lacking that um, that final execution of that pass there at the end. But um, I think there'll be more of that yet to come in the game and hopefully we can break the deadlock before half-time. Entry are on the attack. It's corner to be taken from the right flank. Curled. To the edge of the six-yard area, volleyed at goal, and Jackson perhaps didn't realise how good a chance it was. Straight at Dumont, who makes a very good save. She's over the ball, two metres from the top of the box. Two in the wall, and Amy Jackson there to make a nuisance of herself standing among the Sydney defenders, and Savetta Zunla is about a metre back. She might be looking to charge up and attack this free kick. Here's Nan, left foot, going direct on goal and flashing it over the bar. Dumont may have had it covered all the way. Did she get a ball in the face or might it have been an errant elbow or hand that's that's caused this problem, Anne? It looked like an errant limb, but I'm not too sure, but I'll try and find out for you at halftime. Anne O'Dong, editor of the Women's Game, down on the sidelines. And don't forget to follow at the Women's Game on Twitter. Of course, live tweeting here today as well. I had the, uh, the honour, if I may say, Anne, of live tweeting yesterday's Western Sydney Wanderers versus Perth Glory game. That was a lot of work. 11 goals, Anne. We're yeah. not, not going to see 11 today, are we? You did all right, and so I think we might keep you. All right, uh, ball in the centre of the park. Although in saying that, uh, just before half-time yesterday, uh, it was still nil all. It certainly was. There were six goals scored in 10 minutes of play. We'll get back to that because we might have one here. Davy charges out of her line, diving at the feet of Spencer. She had the advantage there, and Spencer, lightning quick, accelerating late. Well, it's the titanic battle that we expected between these two sides. It's been mostly played in the midfield. Both defences have been reasonably well, as we see Lauren Barnes heads away, have been reasonably well marshalled by their centre-backs. Um, not much space in behind the goalkeepers, and, and really only Brie Davies has had that one save to make as we hit half-time. That is half-time in this FFV radio coverage of the Westfield W League. It's Sydney FC nil, Melbourne victory nil, and that is on the Jets' oh, fitness oh, scoreboard. In the inner suburbs of Sydney, that whistle gets us started. So will there be a goal? We've had one sub in the first half with Rachel Quigley out of the game. And we have Gemma Simon on. Anne O'Dong, editor of thewomensgame.com, has rejoined us on the sidelines. And we have an update on how Rachel Quigley is going. And we haven't had a, a great deal of joy with the wireless microphone to restart this second half. But let's see if we've got you back now. Just for an update of uh, your thoughts on the game and also if you do have any information on Rachel Quigley for us. We're trying to get some information on Rachel quickly from the coaching staff. Um, but in terms of the game, it's definitely cooled down quite a lot. And I think it is perfect conditions now as Lisa Devanna wills and turns away. She does break to about a metre from the top of the area. Being guarded by Clifford. Shimmy of the hips gets past her, but Sam Johnson was backtracking now, teeing it up. Nan in the D, legged by Rollison. Free kick right on the edge of the box. Always disappointing for a defender to give away a free kick in that kind of vicinity. So it's two left footers over the free kick. Nan and Catley. It's Nan to take straight into the wall. Volleyed back to Nan. Lays it off to Catley. Wide on the left, driving it to the edge of the six yard box. And Polias puts it behind for a corner. And Casey Dumont rips the cap off and throws it into the net. Liz Ralston, can you give us any insight into any pre planned subs that are coming up? Is someone setting themselves to come on at the 60th minute? Um, I think you might find that Chloe Legazo might come on just to, to change things up a little bit. But um, we do have a bit of an attacking flair there on the bench, which will certainly make an impact. Zunla is going to get booked here for a challenge on Devanna, another free kick near the top of the box. And so it's going to be Rene Rollison over the set piece. Melbourne victory with four on the wall. Bree Davey is currently up against a left-hand post, issuing the instructions, and now takes a position in the centre of the goal. In fact, I think it's... Is going to be Rollison floating it into the area. Flick header on by Zunla and Barnes was right there with her head to head and it's gone out for a corner. Barnes must have got the last touch. Tobin runs in for the short corner. But she's going to be ignored. Here comes the ball. Polias floating it high to a central position. Zunla the target again. Ball off her back, if anything. And Lisa Devanna coming away with possession. We saw this a few times in the first half and now she's getting into a gallop. She's arm in arm with Harrison and laying it off out to the left. Here goes Reed bursting. She's five metres from the top of the area. Now at the top of the area. Wide on the left. Turning onto her right foot trying to cross and Tegan Allen blocks it away. Back to Reed. 
turning. Passing to Cantley. First time cross on the left foot is perfect. And it reared up and then unable to head it on goal. Had a header at the back post. But it deflects off her and it runs out for a throw. It was a great chance. And Anno Dong, Christine Nan, just not tall enough to get over the ball on that occasion. Take us back to, to that sort of situation because we're seeing it today where it's the much taller Emma Checker who is marking the much shorter Jasmine Spence. So it's the tall defender and the short forward. But what was it like for you as a shorter defender taking on uh, the much taller attacker in that game? Um, I suppose it's something you always have to be a little bit aware of, especially with long balls coming through, is that it's difficult to sort of win those balls in the air, but it's sort of business as usual, I think. And the ball will run down to Casey Dumont, who after only a couple of minutes in the hat has ditched it at the start of the second half. And it means that she's looking into the sun, but probably for not much longer, maybe only another five or ten minutes here before Shadows will have engulfed the ground. And then the lights will take over. Ball wide on the left. It's Sam Johnson, one of the... Americans for Sydney FC trying to dance around another American in Reed, but Reed wins the ball and clears it only as far as Rollison, still inside the Sydney attacking half. She'll pass sideways to Clifford, and Clifford passes to Bolger. And Bolger looking for Tobin. She keeps it moving out wide to the right for Harrison. Harrison swinging it into the area. Spence is there, volleying in the first goal, and it's Sydney FC 1 0. On the hour mark exactly, Jasmine Spencer with a sensational goal, beating Bree Davy at her near post. It's Sydney FC 1, Melbourne victory nil, and Liz Rolston, a big smile on your face because Sydney FC are in front. Yeah, big sigh of relief there. What a great build-up there to have the, um, the patience and the control that Rollo had at the back there just to take that touch um, with Lisa Devanna approaching and, and switched out the other side and then a great ball in there from Amy Harrison and a wonderful finish to top Hi. it off. And the ball has run into touch. It's going to be a Sydney throw, level with the top of the penalty area. Bolger turning onto her right foot, floating a dangerous ball in. And Davy comes out, can't claim it. But she was found by Spencer, who's come off second best in the contact. I think Spencer realised she wasn't going to win the ball in the air and just almost uh, became a little bit of a wrecking ball there. And Bree Davy bore the brunt of it. But uh, certainly the uh, much smaller frame of Jasmine Spencer came off second best. It is stopping on the line. Clifford's got to make a play on it and then puts it out for a throw. So she did everything she could there to try and usher it over the line, but it just wouldn't go. Melbourne Victory do get the ball. Nan passing to Simon. Catley back out for another throw. Blocked away by Harrison. Catley hurls it in. Devanna in a central left position, attacking half. Passing back out to the left for Nan. She wants to pinpoint a pass here. Swings onto her right foot, gives it back to Devanna. Top of the area. Devanna with a little bit of space, playing it into a channel. Jackson, and it's tipped away. Great save by Dumont. Palming it around the left post and behind for a corner. Liz Rolston, sensational save from Casey Dumont. Great save there from Casey, but um, that's, don't want to see her under that kind of pressure, you know, in the first place. What you've really seen is her confidence grow, um, you know, over the last couple of weeks. I think she said it's, it gets easier, you know, every time she has to step out on the field and, and the nerves die down just that little bit more. So I think that she's really come into her own this season and it's, it's really exciting to see a fellow... Um, young Matilda, who's actually still in the running for this year's young Matilda's get a spot. In comes the cross. Davy bats it and catches it at the second attempt. Juggled it, and Clifford was there. And Davy is shouting at the referee, "Where's the protection?" I think Jasmine Spencer again was just getting into her space and causing trouble, but Davy prevails and claims the corner. So Melbourne Victory still one nil down. 75th minute we've ticked into now on the Jets Fitness scoreboard. Ball on the left. Here's Catley, looking up, and taking on Polias, cutting into the centre. Devanna calling for the ball. Catley delivers it now. Devanna with a lot of blue shirts between her and goal. She breaks and shoots, and it's batted down. Dumont with the save. It's loose, and Dumont dives on the spill and makes the save. And Lisa Devanna, with so many bodies between her and goal, still able to find a shooting channel and force another very good save. And Casey Dumont has stepped up now twice with a couple of saves in the last five minutes. Really not enough pressure yet there um, applied to Lisa Devanna and Kimmy Stadge calling out for the sidelines that he wasn't. Maybe a little flicker of hope for Melbourne but they didn't actually have anyone near the spill so Dumont just kicks and clears her lines Barnes meets it on the volley back up to the top of the Sydney defensive line, Devanna is there trying to bring it down taken off her feet by Rollison out to the right, Harrison is there swung in of course the cross for Sydney's goal the only goal of the game Uzunla batting against Checker nice back heel, puts Legazzo into an attacking position, Jackson is backtracking, Legazzo Plays it to Bolger, five metres from the top of the area. In traffic, Legazzo runes around the back. Central left position, Beattie Goad charging through, taking away the ball. After some good defensive work from Ellie Reid to spill it clear, and then Goad lets herself down with the pass, but 
Johnson, loose first touch, straight back to Beattie Goad, who breaks into the attacking half down the right. The sub showing some fresh legs, and she plays it to Nairn. The two number 10s, Nairn and Rollison. Nairn breaks into the area. Here's the cutback through the area. Gemma Simon, 1-1, Melbourne are level. A great run from Christine Nairn, capitalising on the work of Beattie Goad, and Gemma Simon sweeps in the equaliser in the 87th minute. It's Melbourne victory one, Sydney FC one. Anne O'Dong, we'll throw it down to you for your thoughts on the goal. Yeah, that was all Beattie Goad. She uh, she got out and cleared the defence really well, lost the ball, but she battled back and got it. That beautiful pass nicely weighted into the path of Christine Nairn, and that cross was first class. Gemma Simon, uh, she was a defender for the Newcastle Jets. She's definitely scoring some goals now for Melbourne. There'll be a minimum of four minutes additional time that's just come up on the board. So four minutes to go in this one. We've played 40 seconds of it already. And Christine Nairn is over the corner. A goal now could win it either way. Four minutes could turn out to be quite a long time. Here comes the corner. Nairn swinging it. First header is victories. It's volleyed and then off the line by Pelias. Saving the day, Teresa Pelias. I'm not sure it was completely goal bound. It looked to be coming across the face of goal, but Pelias wasn't taking any risks with Casey Dumont out of the equation. Victory so close. And now Jackson playing it. It's been trapped by Polias again wearing the captain's armband today and that was a sensational piece of defending to get Sydney out of jail hard in mouth stuff for Sydney FC after leading Melbourne Victory have very much been on top and it's a bit, bit nerve wracking watching from the sidelines as we try to hold on to this point and Sydney FC haven't given up on winning it just yet, Rollison driving forward, runs past Reed, left side into the penalty area now it's Rollison with a left footed shot and it's straight at Davey who holds at the near post, it was more or less straight above her head, and Bree Davey literally rising to the occasion to make the save. By my estimation, there was about 90 seconds of stoppage still left in the match when Harrison went down, so we're an extra time of extra time at the end of this one. Lights fully in effect at Lambert Park. Kocher turning briefly into the defensive half for a crossfield ball to Barnes. Now to Catley, Melbourne victory. They're going to try and win it here. And Kate Jakovic says enough is enough. It's full time and we can't split them. 1-1 between Sydney FC and Melbourne Victory. A preview for what we hope will be a finals meeting later in the season. It really was an enthralling contest. And the late goal, 87th minute from Gemma Simon, earns a one-all draw.